everyone welcome back to another video how you are doing today thank you so much guys for coming back thank you so much guys for subscribing to my channel thank you for the likes and comments may god bless you all my name is cynthia if you're watching me for the first time you're highly welcome and to my returning subscribers you guys are also welcome sorry guys i've not uploaded in a while that's because i've been busy in today's video i'm going to be showing us how to make this cow neck dress with the side slits and the ruffle. Here I have a three and a half yards of satin fabric. I will be using the pattern paper to draft the half length then transfer it to my fabric. So we'll start with the upper part. I marked out four inches here. I'll be making use of these four inches later on. And this is my starting point. I'll be using the front to cut out the back. So this is my zipper allowance. I have one and the a quarter of an inch for the zip allowance so I will fold it inside but we are drafting out the front part first so the zipper allowance is folded inside so we concentrate on the front panel right on this starting point here I will mark my shoulder measurement the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 16 inches divided by 2 is 8 inches plus half inch for sewing allowance that's 8 and half inches so I'll mark it and half inches here. And I will take um, three and a half inches for the neck width. And the seven inches for the front depth. I will take it like so. I'm making a V neckline. So for this um, draft, I don't think we'll be needing shoulder slant. So I will put half of the armhole measurement here. To get the armhole measurement is either you measure your round armhole divided by 2 or you divide your bust measurement by 6 plus 1.5 inches. The one I'm working with is 8 inches. Because it's a sleeveless dress, I will mark 7.5 inches instead of 8 inches here. So I will mark 7.5 inches here. Right on this 7.5 inches, I will still mark 8.5 inches. That's the shoulder measurement. I will make a straight line here. This is now the chest line. I will place my bust measurement right on the chest line here. The bust measurement is 40 inches. Divided by 4 is 10 inches. So I will mark 10 inches here. I will make a line here. I will look for the midpoint of the arm hole. Connect it like so. So this is the back arm hole. To get the front arm hole, you will go inside by half inch right on this midpoint. We'll connect it. This is the chest line. I already placed the post measurement here. So I will go to the waistline and they place a quarter of the waist measurement right on the waistline here. The waist measurement is 34 inches divided by 4 is 8.5. So I'll mark 8.5 here. I will connect it right from the chest to the waist line. So we we'll go back to the upper part. We'll right on the shoulder here. I will go inside by 2 inches. Right from the shoulder. So now I'll be left with 3 inches. The shoulder is now 3 inches. The reason I'm marking this, I'm going to be adding a rope here. So I will extend this to the upper part. I will extend it by 3 or 4 inches. But there we're going to have um, a strip there or we're going to be tying it, knotting it at the back. So we add a strip to this part here. I will connect this to the armhole. So this is now our new armhole. Right on this um, 3 inches shoulder, I will go up by 3 inches. I will make a straight line. Yeah. 
I will do the same thing for the side. Go up by three inches. I will make a straight line here. So this is the line, the three inches. I step up by three inches. I will come inside by one inch or half inch here. I just want to make a curve here. Then connect it to meet this. Just want to have a little curve there. So we connect it here. So I will go inside a bit by half inch, right on this side. I will go inside a bit by half inch, then come out from this side by one inch and connect it like so. So this is the shoulder before we extended it. Right from this shoulder, we'll go down by eight inches. And this is where I will take my slash. I didn't add my allowance to it. So we add one inch for sewing allowance on the chest line here and the waistline. I'm adding just one inch for sewing allowance. I will go ahead and cut it out. By the time I use facing to turn this side, I'll be left with 2 inches or 2.5 inches. So to create our cow um, effect, I will slice this place open. You don't cut it all through. You cut it very close, but don't cut it all through. I will first transfer it to my front side before cutting out the back side. Before so I will fold my fabric into two. We'll go ahead and open up this place. When you place it like so, I will use pin to hold it down. Then open this place very wide. So right on this place, I will open up about eight or nine inches. So this is nine inches. The more you open it, the more cow effect you get. So I'm going to take it like so. I'll go ahead and cut it out. I'll cut it like so. To this side. So, hope you guys can see it. This is the front. I'll be cutting out the facing, but we'll cut out the back part first before cutting out the facing for the front and the back. So, I'll use my cellar tape to seal this place back. I'm going to be cutting out the back. I'll bring the zipper allowance out. I'll use this to cut out the back. So this is the chest line. I will cut it like so. So that the front and the back um, side will be equal. So right from the chest line here, I will make a line. You can make any shape you want. I just need a straight shape. So I will go inside by half inch here just to eliminate the um, zip bulge. I will take it off. I will go ahead and transfer this to my fabric. I will, this is the back side. I folded the fabric into two. So I will cut it out. In case you want to add that to the back side, you can add one inch here, just at the waistline here. So we only add that to the back side. So I will add one inch here. I will use that for the dart.
So this is the back side. I'm cutting out six inches strip. I have 13 inches here folded into two. That's 26 inches. I will cut this out so you can concentrate on the lower part. I'm cutting out two of these. Remember, we are attaching a strap to the shoulder side. So I'm cutting out two of these. Six inches wide and the 13 inches length. Folded into two. I will cut out the facing. I will notch my zipper allowance in. So I will place this like so to cut out the, the back facing. The back facing is about 8 inches length. So I will still cut out the front facing. So this is the front part. I will make it like so. This is where the armhole stop. I will make sure I cut it about 3 to 4 inches below the armhole. Cutting it out. So guys, we finished cutting out the facing. We are done with the half length. We'll go ahead and they cut out the lower part. So this is the lower part. I have my fabric folded into two. This is the front and this is the back. I added about 1.5 inches for zipper allowance for the back side. The full length is 16 inches. The half length is 17 inches. 60 minus 17 is 42 inches. I'll be using 43 inches for the lower part. Plus one inch sewing allowance, that's 44 inches. So I have 44 inches here. Yeah? And I'll go ahead and place the measurement. This is the waistline. I'll place a quarter of the waist measurement here. A quarter of the waist measurement is eight and a half inches. I'm not adding that to the lower part. I will add one inch for sewing allowance. So right from here, I will mark the hip measurement. I will mark nine inches for the hip measurement, right from the waistline. So I will place the hip measurement right on the hip line here. A quarter of the hip measurement is eleven and a quarter. I will add one inch for sewing allowance. The knee measurement is 21 inches from the waistline. So this is the hip measurement. I will check what I have here. I have um, 12 and a quarter inches. I will still place 12 and a quarter inches here because it's not fitted. It's going to be a bit open. So I will still place the same thing here. 12 and a quarter. I will take it to the knee. From the knee, take it to the length. So this is the zipper allowance. I will come to the waistline and mark one inch. The hip, I will mark one and a half. I will just leave the one and a half inches here. That's the hip line. I will go to the knee line and mark one inch. And I will connect it like so. Connect it from the waist to the hip. And from the hip, I will connect it to the knee. I'll mark this one inch all the way to the down part. Now we go ahead and cut it out. So I will notch it here. This is the zip allowance. So we are done with the cutting. The only part that is remaining is the flint. I'll be cutting it later after joining the fabric together. I don't want the video to be too long. I don't think I'll be showing how to cut the plants. I have a video on my channel on how to cut it out. I'll, I'll just make a, a brief explanation. So we'll go ahead and like, put the fabric together. Now I'll start with the upper part. This is the front part. I'll use the facing to turn the neckline. So this is the facing. Now make sure right side are facing each other. I will use a quarter of an inch or half inch to stitch it here, right on the neckline here. I will stitch the armhole here and bring it down here. And this is the back. I will still use the facing to turn the back side. I 
I will stitch it here. So guys, I finished using the facing to turn the neckline. I turned it inside out and then gave it a good press. This is the front part. So don't worry about this shape because it's cow neck. By the time you knot it, it will look like this. I've also turned the back side and I've taken the back dart measurement. We we'll use the boss pan to mark out the dart. The boss pan is 8 inches divided by 2 is 4 inches. So I added half inch for sewing allowance. That's 4.5 inches. So from here to here, I mark 4.5 inches and then stitch it all the way to the upper part here. Next is for us to join the upper part to the lower part. So I'm going to be joining them together before cutting out this slit. So I will turn this like so. Right side facing right side. I'll use half inch to join them together because half inch is my sewing allowance. Back. I will repeat the same thing for the back side. After I've done that, I will attach my zip here. So my zip is up to here. I will take my zip allowance, stitch it up to here, and close the remaining part here. So guys, I finished joining the upper part and the lower part together. This is the back side. I've also attached the zip to the back. And this is the front. Attach one of the stripes to the front side. Remember, I cut out um, six inches. So I stitch up one side and turn it inside out. So I'll be attaching this to this other side because we're going to be using this to knot it at the back side. It's up to you how long you want it to be. I will push it inside. I'll bring it up from the wrong side. I will stitch them together here. So we go ahead and they join the front and the back together. Make sure the front and the back are lined together. This is the waistline and this is the waistline. So I will stitch it with one inch right from the armhole here all the way to the bottom side. I will repeat the same thing for this side. So guys, I'm done joining the front and the back together. Also attach the strap to it or the rope to it. This is the front. So by the time you knot it to the back side, the cow effect will come up. Okay. Next is for us to cut out the front slit. I will mark out where the slit will be. So I'll go to the waistline. I will come down 18 inches from the waistline. This is totally depends on what you want. I don't want it to go up too much. So from here I will mark 18 inches right from the waistline. This is where the slit is going to start from. I will go back to the bottom side. I will go inside by 7 inches. I will connect the 7 inches. I will connect it like so. Make a curve to meet this 18 inches. I will make the curve like so. I will open up the this side. Because I will be cutting out a little bit from the back side. So I will open up the seam line. This is the side seam. I will open it up. This is the back side and this is the front side. Right from the bottom part here. I went inside by 7 inches. From this 7 inches, I make a curve here and bring it to this upper part. So I will just take a little bit slight from the back side, about 2 inches from the back. I will just take it like so, then bring it back to the line. So I will cut it out. I will just slant it back to meet the, the line, a bit close to the line. So this is the slit. I will be adding the ruffles here. I will measure this out and use it to cut out the ruffles. If I'm attaching it, I will go up a little bit. So I will open up this place like 2 inches because I will attach it right from here. So I will measure this side out and use it to cut out the, the flies. So I will measure it around. I 
I have 55 inches here. I will be cutting out 55 inches spiral florins. I already have a video on how to cut out florins on my channel. I will put it in the description box so you can go and watch it. But I will just make a little illustration for some of you who are new here. So let's say this is the fabric I'm making use of. You just open it up like so. Measure it from here to here. You look for the midpoint. This is the midpoint. You mark the midpoint. So you measure this side and look for the midpoint. So this is the midpoint. So what I will do is to make a cross line here. You make a line here. You make a line here. That's the midpoint. You make a line here. Midpoint. So I will take one inch on each uh, side, one inch on this side, one inch on this side, and then one inch on this side. So you will determine how long you want your flanks to be the length. For these, I will be cutting out four inches for the length. Let's say you are making three inches, but I will be making use of four inches. So I will mark three inches here. I will mark three inches here. I'll mark three inches on this side as well. We connect the lines together. So you now connect this one to meet this one inch. Con connect it like this to meet this one inch we marked out earlier. So you continue marking your three inches. You mark and connect. So you go to this side, mark three inches. You mark three inches on this side also. Mark here three inches. You connect the lines. You go ahead and cut it out. I'm not using three inches. I might be using four inches. This is just for illustration purposes. I'll be using four inches instead of three inches. So I'll go ahead and cut the four inches out. I will cut it off camera. So guys, this is the one I marked out. This is four inches. And it's just the same method I use for the illustration. Just that this is four inches. I mark four inches round. But I think I've gotten up to the amount I'm looking for. I'll cut it out. This is what I have. I will use a quarter of an inch to hem it, then start stitching it right from here. So I will place it like so, open about three inches a little bit here. I will stitch it right from here, go up like so, stitch it with a quarter of an inch or half inch, all the way to this place. I still do the same thing for this side. Take this a bit up. By the time I take it a little bit up, I will join the sides together. Stitch it with half inch round. I'm done attaching the flange to the side. The one in the picture is a bit up, but I just want it to be like this. Here's the lower part. This is the back. This is where I cut from the back, just little. I stitch it a little bit up here, just at the side seam. You know this at the back. So, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're here for the first time. I will see you guys in my next one. Love you. Bye.